be doing it before I've even asked them. Yeah. So, uh, the one thing that I was thinking of is like, it's how weighty is this? Like you were saying, like sometimes you, you know your arms can get tired and that. But is there an actual problem? Do you actually feel like there is a? It can be a bit of a burden carrying this around. Uh, do you know what? I've I've had no problems. Uh, the you know the actual sort of idea of um, like like you say when you're handheld and you've got both joy cons at each end. I was kind of thinking like, is that gonna bother me? Like I kind of thought it was gonna be more weighty than it actually is. Now I've literally just I'm holding this up now and it's it's probably a little bit like it's as light as my tablet. I mean I've got like a, a small tablet that's about the same size. It's as light as that, and considering how much is in there, <laughs> it's kind of amazing, really. Um, like, there, there isn't, there's no weight to it. And the other thing as well, it doesn't get hot. I know that, like, you get a lot of things out there, and they always get really heated, and you're like, bloody hell, this is a nightmare. This hasn't happened with this. Um, I'm quite amazed, because when you're playing a game like Zelda, you think, Jesus, like, it's work, it must be working crazy. No problems whatsoever. So the actual weight of it, not a pro- not a problem. I think the only thing is when you're when you've got handheld, is it's just whether you you know you have to. It takes a little bit of time to get used to having both Joy Cons at each end. If you've been sitting there with a controller, you know it, it's just getting used to you know using it that way. But again, as I say, Matt, you've always got that option of using the stand if you are somewhere that you've got that option, or um, or you could you know literally have it on your lap. And then just you know use your Joy Cons and dock it in the control type thing. So, um, but to be honest, it's not heavy at all. Not heavy at all. It's about as heavy as a tablet. Oh great! So um, yeah, I think you've pretty much wrapping up the questions. I mean, there's only a few that spring into my mind. That but like specifically like one that isn't really related to the machine itself. It's just mm-hmm. what do you believe are the best games to play on this machine right now? I mean, I've bought it and I've got Zelda going with it so for me right now it's essentially just a Zelda machine but I need to find some other games out there to play. Yeah I mean um, with this show I thought you know listen well, I don't want to go into too uh, great detail of the games because we could probably have our own episodes depending on how this goes uh, if, if you the listeners are out there that want another one we'll, we'll cover some games. Uh, now as I said before the first game I got with this this was what came out this was the game that was released at the same time and what a game it was to put out. Um, they couldn't have picked a better game. This was like... Now, I'm a Zelda fan, obviously. Uh, I'm saying this. I will say I'm biased. But I was waiting for this game for about four years. Um, so the fact that it got released with the new machine was just amazing. I think it's one of the first times, if not the first time... In fact, it is the first time that they haven't released Mario with the console straight away. This game, uh, Legends of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, they wanted that to be the forefront runner. Um, so th- um, there wasn't many to begin with. Um, there was that, there was 1-2 Switch, and there was Bomberman. <laughs> they were like the three games out there. I was like, okay. But because Legend, I mean, let me tell you something. That Zelda game, I've heard people, I know that, that might just be huge buffs on Zelda, but they say like the the price of a Switch is worth just playing that game alone um, because, of course, you can't play it anywhere else. It is just... It's very artistic. It's its one of... It's, it's the best open-world game I've ever played, um, period. And the reason for me putting it ahead of anything else, um, not just... Not, you know, down to story or anything like that, is the fact that wherever you go in that game, in that world and by the way is a huge bloody great map (laughs) um i don't know how long it would take to get to one end to the other i'm sure there's somebody that's that's done it but most is you know you're traveling on horseback or you're running and it's not quick at all um but it's part of the beautiful experience of the game but let me tell you something everything everywhere you go kind of feels like it wants to be touched or it wants to have some it'll give you like it interacts with you the world interacts with you around whether it's the weather whether it's like the plants the trees you can always affect something so it's like it it makes you want to explore more than you probably ever need to and you're always rewarded with it because in the most craziest places you will find 
things that you know just you, sh you know uh, like hidden items and things that are going to help you along the game so it, like it kind of opens that up to you wanting to do it more and it's just for me it's the the first game i've played things um i've seen my friend play skyrim i've not played that as much um and i know everybody you know talks about that very fondly i've played games where it's been like grand theft auto style and it's been sitting in la and which is absolutely amazing as well but i put zelda above anything i've seen before or played before just in terms of just how much is in it it's it's um, it has a, a tremendous storyline to it because it'll kind of give you some amazing flashbacks of stuff and it sets everything up uh, which is excellent but again uh, depends Matt have you ever played a Zelda game before is there anything like Zelda-ish that you've played in, in your time you know I <laughs> the only time I played as Link was in uh, Super Smash Bros right so, you know, <laughs> the first time I got into this yeah okay well i mean and, and this is the other beauty thing with it it really harps back to the original legends of zelda in this one so it's like you'll literally have that nostalgia feel like they mapped it certain bits of it exactly the same as the original which is just incredible so instead of seeing it on that bird's eye view sort of very pixel type now you're actually like oh, this is what that was. This is all those bits. And again, there'll be a lot of people picking it up for the first time as Matt is now that maybe didn't play the original Zelda. But the fact that they've done that is just absolutely amazing. Um, it's the first open world Zelda as far as like you literally just have, you go wherever the hell you want to go. You know, it, you, you complete it in any order you want. And, you know, you you can be, you, this is how, you know, this is giving no spoilers away whatsoever. But literally, after you do the beginning part, Matt, you have the option to go and, uh, go and face Ganon, which is the biggest boss in the game. You can go and face him straight away <laughs> if you wanted, if you dared to. Um, but it's all about building. You, you know, you can you can go and do that whenever you want. But it's all about preparing and you know collecting and getting all those things right and, and going along with the story to get there. But at any point, you could go and attempt it, uh, and, and you've got that choice any point you want to. But, yeah, there's just so much to it. Um, I think you're going to fall in love with it, Matt. Like, if you like the things you already like, I think you're just going to be really um, immersed into this kind of new world um, you know it just has literally everything is it if you're into the collecting side of it and you know building up stuff and you know go, going on an, an adventure like literally whatever you can see in a distance you can get to this has been the first time that's happened and it's it's always there there's always like a rising you're thinking christ how am i going to climb that and if you've got to climb something you are literally preparing always whether you're the clothing or anything like that you've got to prepare for it you can't just go and do it you know you can't just say right i want to climb that mountain you've got to prepare for these things so it's it's, it's a lot of planning involved but um it's just it's just yeah a, an unbelievable game um so that i would say is my number one um choice <laughs> i'm sure you've pretty much taken that one um secondly uh i think there's mario mario odyssey now this much recent release this come out in i think it was november this hit the stores um i've been playing this a lot recently because i'd left this game for a while to play and again you know you either love him or you hate mario but i mean how can you hate mario i don't know but mario the last big games we had of him were mario galaxy now matt i don't know if you ever got a chance to play those or saw, saw any of those ones no actually no, i didn't i mean I didn't have a Wii U as well, so right, okay. was that Wii U exclusive? Was that or was that also on the Wii? That was that was on the Wii as well, actually. Yeah, oh. it was on the Wii. Um, yeah, recommend anybody to to play that one. But yeah, they they changed the format with that because they literally it was all about going on these planets and everything was in a was in a kind of globe form. So you were like going around them all the time. Now with this. This is the first time Mario hits open world type territory. And it's not open world to the extent of Zelda. It's literally whatever world you go to and travel to, you can just go wherever you want in it. And um, 
I've got to say, Mario Odyssey, uh, such an enjoyable game. Like, the whole thing is about Cappy. It's this hat that you can literally throw on anything and you become it. And, you know, you have to, whether it's a T-Rex um, or, you know, you, 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 <laughs> you can literally, like, put on about 10 mushrooms and build them up. Um, <laughs> at one point I mean there's so many ridiculous things and then there's all these hidden bits to it um, again it's like it's part of the collecting is just amazing in it um, you're trying to get all these moons together but it really does feel like a like a, he's he's going away on some sort of crusade in this game and um, yeah same formula as always again bowser's around he's nicked the princess um but you know it's a formula that's worked for many many years so i guess why change it but the actual game itself is extremely innovative and this is the first time that they have put in what looks like again their version of new york city um, it's the first time they've ever done that. And what's interesting, it's got a lot of debate going on, I think, for, for, between a lot of nerd people here, myself included, is that um, Mario is kind of small, cartoonish looking, and they have put, like, human people in there. And you're like, okay, so what the hell is Mario? Um, <laughs> where Where is this guy? And what they've done really, really well with this game as well is they've put, like, the nostalgic bits in it so you can go back to the, the two-bit games and they've put that, like, in hidden and places and there's loads of it that, that help you and in some places it's so innovative that they've put both 2d and uh what, what's going on in, in real time and it's all kind of merging into one and you're kind of in and out it's it's absolutely incredible how they did that um but it, yeah it just feels like one big party um i'd say it's it you know it's it's very it's been very comfortable to play it's not been too difficult but i think it's definitely a game I would recommend. Whether you like Mario or you don't, you will love the innovations in it. You just you're blown away by how good everything looks, and uh, it's very very good to just you know play now and then. And also, once you've completed this game, there is so much more to do. I mean, I was like gobsmacked. Apparently, uh, I played this game, and trust me, when I was doing it, I was very very looking everywhere. I come out with about I think it was just over 250 moons. Now, guess how many there are? Over 1,200. Yeah, so that's that's how kind of complex all that is and, you know, trying to find these things. But that's, again, only one part of the game. Um, but, yeah, they, they there's so much replay in this. And the same goes for Zelda as well. Once you've completed it, again, there is DLC content now available um really recommend both of them but even if you don't get both of them you can still go on with zelda you can still build and do things around that you know there's no way you'd finish zelda without having something to do let's put it that way um, and the same goes with mario it's very very replayable um and yeah i think they've done an, a really good job at it. it looks like they've taken a lot of time and just it's the minute details that I'm seeing in this that you can really appreciate. So it's not something that's just been slung together and they've just sold it on the name of Mario. They've they put in so much. So that's a recommendation as well there, Matt. Um, now, other games, um, I want to make sure I don't miss any out. So I'm literally going to go onto the shop, make sure I don't. But other games I'd recommend, Matt, of course, if you're a Mario Kart fan, you cannot yeah. go without a Nintendo and not have Mario Kart, in my opinion. Um, now, what they've done as well, they've got some interesting characters. They, they've got the Splatoon characters involved in this one. And also, they've got Zelda, of course, Link is in it. Um, all the, the usual characters but there are i think it's up to 64 different tracks in this one matt so wow. yeah That's and so uh i was watching somebody on youtube i thought it was just really clever i didn't realize now i knew that they'd had some of the original tracks from the original game in it no doubt about that but what i didn't realize is that if you go on a video on youtube and you put original mario kart up against you know mario kart deluxe where we're at now those tracks, like the rainbow tracks, they play like almost simultaneously. Like they've done them exactly the same. Uh, it's incredible how good they've done it. Of, of course, the modern one is just so much more. It's it's a lot of fun to play as multiplayer. 
Um, and again, they've put battle mode in it as well, where you're not racing, you're just kind of whacking each other with all the different things. Um, and yeah, they, they, you know, it's funny, Mario Kart, it's like, again, very similar formula always, but it always works. Like people always genuinely find Mario